And welcome to Horror Movies and Beyond. And I am here in the lovely home with John Masari. And this is such an exciting experience because we actually get go behind the scenes of many things that he's done. And I am so honored to be in your home. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. And I promise I won't be Instagramming <laughs> while during this. I'm going to turn my Instagram off. Anyways. So, John has done more than what we think. So, he started a long time ago. <laughs> Not to... <laughs> and he's done, you know, many different shows and movies. And, I mean, he's done, you know, Johnny Quest, The Wizard of Space and Time, and a vinyl is coming out for that, right? Wizard of Speed and Time is having a oh, vinyl... Oh, I say Space and Time. Oh, I'm so That's sorry. <laughs> the Wizard of Speed and Time has a vinyl uh, recording off of uh. that. Uh, there's also, around that same time, I did the Wonderful World of Disney theme. Yes, yes. So, I, and I went from the Wonderful World of Disney theme to one year later to working on... Wait, the theme that actually comes on when you... Well, you know, they, they have, there's various permutations... Because I used to watch it as a kid. Yeah, there's various permutations of the Wonderful World of Disney mm -hmm. theme, and I did one of them. Okay, okay. There's like probably 20 different versions, and so I did one of them, and that was in the 80s. About a year before I did this movie. Oh, okay. So I went from Wonderful World of Disney mm -hmm. to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> that is a big jump. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> I always used to play music to my grandma. Mm. Uh, and I took her to the Wonderful World of Disney. And she thought that was like, oh my goodness, that was like to her that she was in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then I took her some music from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And I played her the scene where you first see the spaceship in the forest mm -hmm. and she says oh that's so beautiful what's the name of that oh grandma it's called killer clowns from outer space <laughs> you've got to change the name that's a horrible name why would you call anything that you know mm -hmm. so anyways so yeah so there was a wonderful disney killer clowns from outer space mm -hmm. and you also did monsters that monsters? tv show i used to watch as a kid was scary yes that was a lot of fun to work on and uh it was retro puppet master mm-hmm and uh, and a few other uh, monster movies. I did, yes. a, I did a Bigfoot movie, by the way. Oh. Called uh, Cherokee Creek. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And then uh, I did a, a recently. I just did a western, a full-on western, mm -hmm. with, directed by Josh Becker. Okay. So that okay. was a lot of fun. So, so there's like we've got everything covered. Yeah. Yeah. So you are an American film music composer. Mm -hmm. Why why get into music? Like, what was m about music that drawed you to just want to do it, like, express mm -hmm. your musical talent? Well, for me, personally, music is an experience. Mm -hmm. It gave me experience. It would put me in a mood. And it was a very special experience. And I grew to discover that I wanted to recreate that experience for me with my own music make make music myself and then I realized you know this is it's better to make an experience for other people so that people can experience the experience that I have experienced music can be a transformative a any kind of music mm -hmm. can be transformative it doesn't have to be a particular genre but uh, that's and that's that's the that was the initial per that was the the seed that made it happen okay so that's so to sum up everything, mm -hmm. this musical experience, now there's Killer Clowns from Outer Space that became one of the biggest, <laughs> like, if not, it, it's one of the biggest cult classic films out there that mm -hmm. if you're a horror film or even a not a horror film, a fan, mm -hmm. um, people have seen that movie. I mm -hmm. mean, little kids... Oh, many young adult, old, many everybody, generations. yeah, have seen that film. So, how how did that come about? Like when you started, you know, the whole theme song for that. Like, what was the the way of like? Because it has a unique sound. Like, mm -hmm. what would you like tapping on something? It's like, oh, this sounds good. Like, mm -hmm. what was the formula for that theme song that you did? Okay, I mean, you did the music throughout, but right. it's just this one. You're talking about the march. Yeah, the march. Okay, the march. Well, that had its roots. That that the the iconic Killer Clowns March had its roots 
much earlier when I was in high school. I was in a band called Crisis, and we played what was called he um, hard rock. It was before the term heavy metal was was ex widely accepted, so it was hard hard rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were, uh, the band I was playing it. We would we would play um, you know Black Sabbath, uh, Kiss, um, um, Blue Oyster Cult. Led Zeppelin and all that and it was a lot of fun but dude, we, we wanted to branch out and start doing our own original music so I came up with that Killer oh. Clowns March when I was in high school Oh, okay. and so I was teaching it to the band they go oh, okay well what, what are the chords to that I go well it's not really a chord it's there's, it's like a riff mm -hmm. you know I mean but if you kind of put it together well, I guess it would be like a D major 7 chord but it's broken up and they go D major 7 that's a jazz chord John <laughs> We're not going to be playing jazz. We're playing hard rock. Because at the time, I used to play in the jazz band. I used mm. to play jazz piano. I, I played, I played uh, bass guitar. I played um, uh, classical music in the symphonic band and everything. So they thought I was like bringing all these corrupting influences to hard rock, right? Mm. So it went nowhere. Mm. So the second I saw Killer Clowns on the screen, I go, I know exactly what to do. So oh, okay. I hauled that out of mothballs and just played. <laughs> and the Kyoto Brothers really liked it. Oh, that's... That, of, of all the things, like, wow, that like kind of defines, it's like, it's kind of disjointed, but yet cool, and it's got a heavy metal thing going on. Mm -hmm. Because by that time, we had heavy metal. The, in the 80s, we could call hard rock heavy metal. Yeah, or a does, certain type of really hard rock. It really does have like a unique sound to it. Yeah. Like you hear it, you automatically know now what right. movie it's from. Right. So then you did a... Fast forward, you actually did a concert um, yes. last year. Yes. And what led up to that concert? Like, what was the idea behind it? Well, that was the 30th anniversary celebration mm -hmm. of the release of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It was 2018, May 19th, mm -hmm. 2018. And um, uh, basically, five years prior to that, I had gone to the 25th anniversary at Son of Monster Palooza. And it was the first time I had ever gone to a convention uh, that, uh, that part of it was the focus on Killer Clowns. Mm -hmm. And I met all of these fans, these w wonderful people that really loved the movie and were fam more familiar with it than I was. They even knew the names of the characters of the clowns. I don't even think <laughs> the Kyoto Brothers, <laughs> by the way, here's the Kyoto Brothers signature right here <laughs> on this. She, we actually know the Kyoto Brothers, right? Right yeah. here. And they, they didn't really have particular names. I think the only one was maybe Killer and Clownzilla, but the fans kind of over the years, it's like we have Shorty. Yeah, they actually maybe made Shorty a, was named. a fan Wicca right. page for Killer Clowns, and There's they Ru named all of them. Right. There's Rudy, and uh -huh. he's like the cutest and smartest of all the clowns, in my opinion. <laughs> I, I still think Shorty might be a, a yeah. young adolescent girl clown. It's my fan theory. You know, just take whatever you're worth. Anyways, <laughs> so um, so I met all these wonderful people, and I said, you know what? I think we have an opportunity here to realize the music in a way mm -hmm. uh, to to, uh, to kind of give thanks to the fans. And I did an Indiegogo campaign to to raise um, the uh, the necessary resources to to do an album. We re-recorded the music for orchestra, it's called the Kill the Clowns from Outer Space Reimagined mm -hmm. soundtrack. And the, a year after that, we, we decided to put on a concert uh, celebrating the whole, uh, uh, the, the actual 30th anniversary. And it actually, it was released the night that it came out, to the day. Yeah, the, I was I, there at that concert. Yes, that you was, were there. That what was you amazing. Think? You had, did you have a good time? I did have a good time. It was nice. Because it wasn't only the concert. There was a bunch of stuff going on before. Yeah, there was like, it, it was like a pre like show. I mean, you know, there were bars. There were the clowns. Right. We had, <laughs> you took pictures with the clowns. We had real clowns from the Kyoto <laughs> Brothers studio. Yeah, yeah, and the Kyoto Brothers were there too. Yeah. Um, the cast I mean, was there. 
yes, Suzanne they were. and Grant, yes, the, yes. Mike and Debbie were there. Yeah, that, that was, it was just fun, exciting. I mean, other people were there. And they I were mean. so sweet. They had done so many interviews afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they talked, they described it as a surreal experience. Suzanne is from Northern California. Mm -hmm. So she, I, I met all my friends there. And all of a sudden, there's clowns. And there's, my wife said, there, there, there's popcorn everywhere. There was like a, they're kind of like a red carpet, so to speak, you yeah. know, with killer clowns on it. And uh, Grant and said, uh, they were very sweet the way they described it. Mm -hmm. They said, it was just, one, I can't wait to do it again. You know? Yeah, because they, really they reenacted one of their scenes. D Steve Kioto directed a reenactment of the scene. We played music behind. And oh the, yeah, you know where they where they had find the, the, the cotton. The cotton candy. They realized <laughs> yeah. that their friend was there, right? And she screams, goes ah! Yeah, that was a, a very very. And you great got to experience. meet Suzanne, right? Yeah. Isn't she just wonderful? She. They're both sweet. Yeah, I, I met yeah. them both there. Yeah, they're. It was just an ex like it was like surreal because I knew like the things that you had to go through to get there. And then once right. you're there, it was just like, it, uh, you can't, it's like, oh my God. Everybody, because <laughs> everybody it's, it's almost there. like what, you know, um, in, in preparation for yeah. the concert. I, um, like, uh, what did you do to prepare for the oh, show? Well, easy, well, my business model, this is gonna sound very funny. I just wanna point out that I also signed this side. <laughs> and someone's calling, someone's rude, someone rude person is calling me. And I'm gonna put the phone over here. Um, anyways. <laughs> So, I he, this is going to sound very strange. Okay. Okay. So, the, we're ready, were we ready very for strange? strange? We're ready for strange. My <laughs> my business model uh -huh. for putting on the concert was the same business model as World War II. Oh. Isn't that sound funny? Yeah. <laughs> because Franklin Delano Roosevelt told Dwight Eisenhower and MacArthur says, "Win the war." Very hmm. simple. Just, just, just win the war. Just, defeat Germany in um, in Europe, and uh, stop uh, Imperial Japan. That's all. Mm -hmm. That was. It's very simple. So mm -hmm. I got together experts. There was um, Noah Gladstone who runs Hollywood Scoring, and he contracts all the big recording sessions in town. Like you'll see a, a, a massive recording session for like um, for Riot Games or something like that. They only call the top A call people for that or for mm -hmm. Star Wars, you know, they get those people. M most of the people that were in that orchestra play in, in, in the, the top movies in town. In other words, we were, I knew I was in really good hands. The concert master uh, is, was Mark Robertson, and he plays in all the big sessions. He gets all the best string players together. Uh, every musician in there was just like a class A, top of the notch, but you can't get any better, mm -hmm. right? And um, so I had that. I had the people handling the sound and visuals. Mm -hmm. They were all experts. The guy that, that, that uh, set up the program that keeps the movie in synchronization with me and the orchestra, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole program, there's a whole, that's a whole setup onto its own. It's a, it's a highly specialized process. He is, um, uh, that was um, Alex Levy, and he's, uh, uh, Michael Giacchino's music producer and music editor. Mm -hmm. So I only got the best people. So I don't have, all, all I had to do, I told her, I got everyone together. This is all I want to do. I want to be able to show up on stage and conduct the, the show. I don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and all I knew is when I showed up, best musicians were there, the Dickies were there, dealt mm -hmm. directly with the Dickies manager. Mm -hmm. D Dickies, the band, the Dickies are hot, they're, Top notch. Yeah, they're, they're, it sound exactly top -notch pros. from the like they did it live, yeah. but it sound exactly like from the movie. They're, which they it is from the movie because they were right there. Each one of them are yeah. consummate musicians. And, and when I, I actually walked around up there, mm -hmm. not on the stage, but like got close to the there were instruments I never even seen before mm -hmm. that were up there. I was like, mm -hmm. what is like there was one in particular he was waving over it. But he wasn't touching oh, it. Oh, <laughs> that was a, a I was, theremin. Yeah, I was like, what? Is yeah, that? It, it, it emits a, 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 a kind of like an electrical charge, like a, a mm. like it's like you're messing with an, a TV antenna. Yeah, he was. You know, you put your hands in front of it, and it and it changes the the pitch, right? It, that a, is pretty it's cool. It's a, a, a <laughs> electro. It's one among the first electronic instruments. Mm -hmm. So he was playing that. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that was a yeah. so it was a lot as of fun. you were. In your whole getup, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're right. about to walk 
on that stage and right. conduct? Like, what is going through your mind? Uh, the only word I could say is I was excited. Okay. I was excited to go on there and m make this happen. And I knew w from the rehearsal mm -hmm. and setting everything up, setting up the, uh, because the program that I conduct with is kind of like Guitar Hero. Oh, okay. It kind of like you see lines and pops come up that keep you in sync with the film oh, really? and the music. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot <laughs> of fun. But um, I just knew that when that MGM lion comes out and roars, mm. people are going to go, this is going down. <laughs> this is the real deal. You know? Yeah, it was the and, real deal. And then when the, when the <laughs> song kicks in and it's just like pow, 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 you know, you, could, you, you were there. Yeah. I mean, I could feel the energy of the audience mm. from where I was. And we, I don't know if you remember, we had three screens. Yeah. Had the main screen and two screens mm -hmm. at the side, so no one was going to miss out on anything. <laughs> no. And as a matter of fact, the concert master, who's the principal violinist, mm -hmm. he told the musicians, no one stares at the screens. Keep your eye on the music. <laughs> and, they, and they all go, we've already seen the movie like 10 times. So, so as you're up there conducting, um, yeah. what is going through your mind? Like, as you're doing this, like, what... Um, we're, let's get into the brain mm -hmm. of Jarvis. Like, what is going through your mind at that point of when you're looking at the screen, making sure, you know, symbols popping, you, you know, you're conducting. I don't know exactly what you do, but you know, it's like, well, what is going through You really want to know. You really want to know. Like, what is... You, you want to know the absolute truth? Yeah. What I brought the thinking? wrong reading glasses. <laughs> so I'm looking at the, the score is a blur. Oh. I'm going... Oh, wow. And I think to myself, okay, I basically memorize the score really and i kind of know the configuration of everything i'll just let it go really yeah i just had the wrong because if i was to i would have to have the score this close to me with the particular glasses that i had oh wow. to read it properly because these glasses i could be here i see everything in focus but the other the wrong glasses that i brought <laughs> i have to be here and oh, you know wow. if i'm conducting the score is like down here below me mm -hmm. so I just, I just said, we're so just, you had we're to going, use we're memory. Just, we're going, that is amazing. We're just going through. That is yeah. amazing. <laughs> and I did turn the pages, but there, I, I would psych myself out. I go, don't look at the measure numbers. Because mm. I'll see on my screen, the Guitar mm. Hero thing, I'll see measure 93, <laughs> but I'll look here and see, is that 88? <laughs> and I, so I couldn't get involved with oh, that. Okay. I couldn't get involved with that. Oh, okay. And uh, I had, uh, so also, I also had a, um, Someone helped me out with the orchestration yes. of the score from synthesizer to orchestra. Now, I had already done it for the album, mm -hmm. but not the entire score. Okay. So the rest of the music from the score had to be done, and it was done by Bernhard Eder, okay. uh, very fine musician and conductor from um, Vienna. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we just communicated long distance. Uh, I, I would give him sketches with notes on you know what we're looking for. Let me put this little face here so he's, he doesn't feel left out. <laughs> Um, so um, he would get that all together, mm -hmm. and then there's a person who's a copyist, who like conforms it to so the musicians can read it. And then there's a librarian oh, man. that folds everything <laughs> up and pastes everything, makes sure everyone has the right part. There's actually a book. There's a mm -hmm. book for the flute. The mu musicians in preparing for it, mm -hmm. the music is published online, so they can rehearse their part beforehand. They can get familiar with it. One of the flautists, uh, she was the flute and piccolo player, uh, Gina Luciani, on her Instagram, she has a video of herself playing. Mm -hmm. the, here on, here's my latest uh, gig. It's Killer Clowns from Outer Space by John Masari. And she starts playing a little bit of it. It's really cute. Oh, okay. so that's So that's what happened. It just, mm -hmm. And that night, everything just came together. So once everything came together, yeah. after it was over, yeah. and you're seeing your friends, family, your colleagues, just right. that whole experience, you stand up there, you know, people taking pictures and getting autographs afterwards. Right. What did, like, what did you learn from that? That all the hard work and everything that you put in for that night, like, what did you walk away from? I walked away with the fact that we can do this again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully soon. <laughs> and that's what we're working on. We And, and uh, um, I uh, had uh, Matthew Heitschu, he, he's basically direct, he's directed the, um, live concert movie that will be a uh <clears throat> a something that we can share with people mm -hmm. a bit easier than having a concert 
or because that's quite yeah. a, quite a, quite a production. So that would have to be set up uh, far in advance. But screening a movie is a lot of would be a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. So that that's what was going through my okay. mind. Okay, okay, now we did this. Now let's go to the next step. So the you next know. step that actually happened <laughs> is that um, Universal Studios in mm -hmm. Orlando yes. for Halloween Horror Nights created. A killer clowns experience. Yes, and that so was in how Orlando. Did, yeah, right, in right. Orlando, how Orlando, Florida. Yeah. And how did you find that out? And I believe you did go. Yes. You were there. Yes. How how was that experience? Well, that was a big surprise that popped out of nowhere. No. Oh, okay. I learned about that via social media. Oh. Okay. And I'm going, and I called the Kyoto <laughs> Brothers right here. I called the Kyoto <laughs> Brothers, and I said. You guys wear that? There's a, yeah, we heard about it. I, I can't even imagine what it's like. So we all decided that we were going to go down mm -hmm. there and visit them. And they had a scare zone. This was 2018. Mm -hmm. It was such a fun scare zone that people would get food and drinks and stay there. <laughs> it's like oh, they okay. would just like party because th they were playing the music mm -hmm. constantly, and they picked all the really cool cuts, you know, that people can dance to and has a oh, lot okay. of a lot of suspense and and and. Uh, um, like all the songs, and they even played my reimagined soundtrack, which has extended oh, wow. version, a six minute version of the Killer Clown March. Oh, wow. So they played that whole thing. So people are just like rocking out, and, and <laughs> it's not only me, it's like several YouTubers are just constantly visiting. So it was on for like a month and a half. Yeah, I wish so, I could have went. So there's all kinds of, it's just like a complete party app. <laughs> and, and the characters, the performers that played uh. the different parts. Got it spot on. So that was a lot of fun. It looked like and a lot I, of fun. I made so many new friends for, uh, in Orlando, and it's like, and they all want me to come back and live there. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds so fun. I wish I could have went, but hopefully, I mean, hopefully they do it again. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, that would be nice. That would yeah. be really nice here in California. <laughs> in California, <laughs> that would be cool if they did it here in California. Yeah. So next, um, just recently. Um, a movie just came out, Child's Play. Yes. Yeah, that's a remake of <laughs> Tom Holland's Child's Play. But um, that was actually a good film. That was actually good. I have to say that. It was actually a good film. As far um, as a reboot, you like that? You yeah, like uh, that. yeah. Yeah. It, it actually could have worked on its own. Mm -hmm. it, they could have named it Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that could have been its own. But right. uh, what was exciting about that is that I heard that there was a poster so in the room, if you, I, I don't know if this is spoiling for anybody, but in the, in the room, um, in Andy's room, mm -hmm. um, as you, as the camera pulls out, mm -hmm. you see to the left, a giant killer clowns <laughs> poster. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there like, wow, even so many years later, a movie that is for today, it's mm -hmm. still, it still brings everyone together. I mean. Mm -hmm. A lot of, there were a lot of people I would hear whisper, oh, Killer Clowns. Like, people were saying that. And really? Yeah. Like That's I would, funny. I mean, and, and it's That's just funny. like, it's so exciting that something as, um, as for even today, it mm -hmm. still brings so mm -hmm. much, like, nostalgia for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And, like, how does that make you feel? Like, even in movies today, there's still some type of reference of mm -hmm. Killer Clowns. Well, I think it's part of American culture and American uh, lore. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's a, such a uniquely American thing. Bear McCreary, who did the score for Ch the new Child's Play, uh, mm -hmm. sent me an email. He says, he said, dude, they're using the killer clown poster in the kid's room. And I go, that's awesome. You know? <laughs> so, um, so uh, you know, I don't know, maybe they're planting Easter eggs here and there, you know, little little hints and stuff. But uh, I think it's cool. And my, my kids have called me and says, Dad, I saw something the other day where had, someone had... A, some sort of killer clown thing in their room, mm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I forgot what TV series it was, but but th there's like these little hints all over the place because it's part of American culture. I mean, people have Star Wars toys, they have you know memorabilia from all sorts of movies, and so that's one of them. Yeah, that was definitely something um, exciting to to actually see that. Yeah, um, but it's a great film. <laughs> no, they keep telling people about that. That is a good I gotta see Please it. see them. <laughs> I got to see it. Yes, yes. Um, so, Stranger Things. Season three. Season three yes. came out yes. July 4th. Right. And I fell asleep. <laughs> so, I kept to watch it so you days later. <laughs> you can always, you can watch it a hundred times days later. Right. Yeah, it just, it just came out. Um, it's a great show. If you haven't seen Stranger Things, you have to see it. But... 
this one, this season is particularly special mm-hmm. because during the first episode of Susie, Do You Copy, Dustin comes home from camp. But as he's walking through the house trying to figure out where, why are my toys are moving and doing weird things, you hear familiar sound. Mm-hmm. You actually hear mm-hmm. part of the theme mm-hmm. from Killer Clowns from Outer Space in Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. It's like, how did how did that get involved? Like, how how did that work? Well, out? a few months ago, uh, Nora Felder, who is the music supervisor for Stranger Things, uh, contacted me and asked if they can get uh, copies of the various cuts. And they mentioned what cuts they needed specifically Mm -hmm. because the directors really liked those cuts for a particular scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I was told is that there's little robots that come to life and they (laughs) they want to use, uh, I think, Muscle Car Clown and uh, Mike and Debbie's Discovery and a a couple Mm -hmm. of others. They want to, like, use them. And I was just amazed when I saw it. It was edited together such that it sounded like a cohesive piece of music and so that's how it happened it was, it was that simple it was that simple so I, I, I'm you know apparently the Duffer brothers have an affection for all sorts of great uh, genres of, mm. of uh, film and what have you and uh, so that's all there was and, it was a, I, and I think I saw it on July 4th or the 5th the next day or something like that and I watched it with my kids and they had never seen Stranger Things and my kids by the way they're grown up they're like oh, my you know, heart um, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they said uh, we we listened we we heard it go oh dad that's it they recognized it before I was so thrilled oh they recognized dad's music <laughs> so then so then afterwards they go mm-hmm. well we have to watch uh, we have to watch the season on the other two seasons they go no no we're not gonna watch season three and then go to one we're gonna start with one <laughs> so they they over a period of I don't know how many days they saw the entire three seasons oh wow and they call me okay I saw it it's really cool I can't wait for season four <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. Going through all this experience, you know, you did the concert, you did, you know, you went to to Orlando, mm-hmm. we have Stranger Things, we have Child's Play, all these things. So it all sounds like, how does that make you feel like that something that you, something small mm-hmm. and now even Stranger Things where it's one of the most popular shows on Netflix mm-hmm. has brought us together, like from a simple piece, mm-hmm. sum it up, like what can you sum up that? that feeling did you say like in a few words of how that makes you feel today well i think right now i don't know if you remember but the end of the concert i i or or during the q a at mm-hmm. the concert last year i i it, it's so wonderful to know that i have like i feel like i have nieces and nephews throughout the world mm-hmm. that are now uh, familiar acquainted with me mm-hmm. through my music oh. so i uh, I think that's the way it goes. I, I feel like I have an extended family mm-hmm. of, of people that, uh, that uh, first of all, they understand the music. Second of all, they actually like it. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, wow, that's, that's wonderful that they mm-hmm. like it, you know, and, and, it's attached, and it's attached to a movie that they have an affection for. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think, you know, it's hard to, it's not just a bizarre movie, it's just, it's just so darn creative. Mm-hmm. You know, who would have ever thought of doing that? It, it goes back to the Kyoto Brothers, they, they wanted to make a movie that they would want to watch. And, and that's, they did. And that's what it goes down to. Yeah. You know, if you make, you know, Stan Lee said this, you know, if you, if you make something that brings you joy, and you can put it together properly where you could say, yep, this is it, this is a, a representation of the thing that gives me joy. It doesn't matter what it is, it could be a piece of artwork, a model, or, or, or a piece of music. Um, you know, people will pick up on that, mm-hmm. and it will connect with them. You know, because I don't know if you know, but the original Spider-Man was an idea that was kind of rejected, and the only reason why it even got published is because the, the, the magazine publication was going downhill anyways, but when they released that, it was such a, a hit mm-hmm. because they didn't say. First of all, he's a teenager and he's got problems. <laughs> what? How could you? How could you? That's that thing. Okay. <laughs> first of all, he's a teenager. Mm-hmm. He's got problems. No one wants to read about a teenager with problems, <laughs> right? And it became such a success. So for me, it's it's the fact that I have like an extended family and people have an affection for it. Um, is uh, is very 
um, heartwarming and gratifying. Oh, okay. Um, so that sums up. Okay. But I do, is there anything that, anything could be special that could be happening with Killer Clowns that us fans could look forward to in the future, or? Yes, I can. I can, what I can say right now is that there are some wonderful things that are happening in the future and uh, they're all going to be a lot of fun. And that's about all I can say. <laughs> I mean, well, for, that, that tells a lot. For, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. For me I can't wait. <laughs> for me personally, there are things that I'm going to be doing myself that mm -hmm. I'll be revealing later, like uh, certain appearances and public performances, um, different, uh, different iterations mm -hmm. of... Uh, different manifestations of the Killer Clowns music, mm -hmm. you know, th that I'll be, uh, that I'm working on planning out now. That hopefully by um, <coughs> by Halloween of mm -hmm. 2019, they'll be it'll be ready to be launched. Oh, okay. So that's what we're work. That's what we're working toward. All right. You know? If you guys want to follow John Masari, he has Instagram, Facebook, and the, and the Twitter machine. Twitter. Twitter. Anything else? Yeah, it is, but I don't use them. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't use. What's the uh, Snapchat? It's uh, too much. I got <laughs> at some point Snapchat. I just like every once in a while I'll check it, but I, I just can't get you know. Uh, I I got my work cut out for me with the other three. Hey, but dedicated If you want to get me go we'll on Snapchat, I'm fine with that. But do you so. Snapchat? I do Snapchat. Do you use the little funny faces? I <laughs> do the funny faces and everything. Oh, you do? It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I just take it just for the fun. I, I want to yeah. look like a dog or a cat here. My, my daughter, <laughs> she, she'll she'll commandeer my phone, and I go, what did you just do? And she'll have like, um, you know, she'll make me look like a unicorn or something <laughs> like that. I have purple and yellow streams coming out of my ears, you know. Well, thank you so thank you. much for having me in your you are so home. You are so awesome, and I, oh, I just... I love your horror movies and Thank beyond. Thank you. And then I had to bring, you know, yes. a clown here. And this is real popcorn, so don't eat it. And I love your, uh, <laughs> and I love your, your, uh, like your mission statement. Oh, reviewing horror movies for the living to understand the dead. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, <laughs> so I thank like you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for another episode of Horror Movies and Beyond. And follow John Masari and keep watch on Killer Clowns. You never know when they'll come down again yes. and try to take over the world. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>